All right, so the next thing I wanna do is a little bit of organizing and cleaning up. Uh, I'm going to name um, all the uh, objects that I have here. So I can just double click these in my outliner and name uh, door. Um, I'll name this one main house. Um, house add for house addition and then chimney. I also want to select everything and delete my history. Uh, as you're modeling, if you look in your channel box over here, you'll notice that you have sort of like a bunch of inputs being added up here. And this is just the fact that basically everything in Maya is a node. Um, so every function you do, a node gets created. Now, over time, this will slow down Maya quite a bit. Um, so we do need to keep this clean and uh, periodically just delete all of these. Now, there are cases where you don't want to delete your history, but in the situation where you're just modeling, um, you you can delete your history. It's fine if you, uh, if you just want to stay sort of clean and organized. So I'm just going to select everything here and go up to edit, delete all by type and history, and that will clean my scene up. The other thing I want to do is, of course, save my scene, but not only save my scene, but set a project for it. So to do that, I'm going to go to File, uh, Set Project. And I actually already set my project. So I have here in my little studio drive current projects, um, I have this isometric house. Um, all you really need to do is create a folder with your with the name of whatever it is on it. Uh, and just click that and do isometric house. If we look inside this folder, we'll see that there's nothing there. Um, if you want to keep your scene really simple, that's sort of the way to do it. Uh, the other way to do it is just go to uh, your file and project window. And then you can see that I have this uh, isometric house uh, studio. Um, it's all set up, current projects, and it's going to create a bunch of these sort of default folders for you that you may or may not need. You definitely won't need all of them, but um, throughout the course of this project, you may need uh, a few of them. So I'm just going to hit accept, and then my project is set, and then uh, to double check, I'm just going to go to file, um, save scene as, and just make sure that I have a file for my house. So this is my isometric house. Uh, so I just want to make sure that scene is saved there. So now uh, once my scene is all cleaned up, everything is named. Uh, the next thing I want to start doing here is just sort of cutting out spaces for my windows and doors. Um, so uh, that again is going to be done with probably the tool that we're going to use more than anything. And that is the multi-cut tool. So I'm going to grab my multi-cut tool here and I'm going to make a line sort of right there where above my door is there and right there where, uh, just at the bottom of the door. And then I'm looking at my windows here. Um, they're not, you know, some windows are larger than, than others. I'm going to try to keep things a little bit simple and keep them to be, uh, a very similar size, um, with the exception of maybe this tiny one up here. Um, so I'm going to make another cut, probably, uh, one quarter of the way up my door. So I don't want them going all the way down to where the bottom of the door is, but maybe something around here would be good. And then, um, and then for the door very easily, I can just sort of line these up like that and like that. And then I can have a little cutout for the door there. I'm not too worried about this at the moment, how they kind of curve up. I'm going to use these edges to make these other windows, uh, but we'll get to that here in a second. And then for my, my win other windows here, um, I'm going to do two windows on the side. And this first one, I'm just going to sort of eyeball.
get it somewhere around there. And then, um, and then I'm actually going to use the cube I have for my door to kind of measure that space. So I'm just going to put that there and kind of size up that space. Mainly, I just need to size it uh, horizontally. And that way I can just move this whole cube around now and kind of position, position it for another window. So if things aren't perfectly symmetric, it's okay. Again, we're just doing something kind of fun here and um, we're not worried about getting everything precise and exact. And I find that uh, a lot of times when you have the element of sort of human error, um, things look a little bit cooler as well. So I have those two there. I'm just going to move this guy to the side for now. And then for my door here, I can just delete this face to make that hole for the door. And I'll delete these faces to make the hole for the window. Now this will eventually be covered, so uh, don't worry too much about it looking kind of sporadic at the moment. We're just sort of cutting out the holes so we can put a light in there and then light will so sort of shine out through those holes. Um, so then this guy, this little cube here that I'm using as sort of reference, I'm going to take this guy and just rotate him 90 degrees. So I'm just going to start rotating and then I can come over to my, um, my channel box here and just do 90 degrees. And then I'm just going to kind of put that in place where that other little window is. It looks like that one might be covered up or something, or I'm not quite sure if that's even really a window. Um, I'm actually thinking now that I'm looking at it that I might just leave that uh, no window there. But I do want windows here on each side of my chimney. So I'm going to just put that guy there. And then same thing, I'm gonna select that geometry, go to my multi-cut tool, and I want to cut in some new edge loops to kind of match where that window goes there and there. Again, just eyeballing everything. It doesn't have to be precise or exact. Just sort of like in the ballpark of where things should be. Okay, and then I will just delete those faces for those windows uh, and just for now leave it the way it is. Now if you want to uh, go ahead and make windows for the other sides of your house, that is great. I will probably do that as well. Um, actually let's just go ahead and, and do that. Um, so probably since this side of the house um, we may do a door or something on this side of the house too. So it's got like a front door and then maybe, or maybe a door back here. Um, now our final product, we're probably not going to see that side of the house, but you know, I might just add it um, just in case at some other date, I want to show off the house. Um, so I'm going to, again, just put in some cuts here. For where those windows are going to be and just move this guy down i could also go ahead and just duplicate him so i'll just control d or command d to duplicate that window maybe we'll do these two close together and then i'll do a door uh right in here So I'll duplicate one more for what would be the door. And again, doesn't need to be exactly the same way I'm doing it. Uh, I want you to use your 
sort of creative freedom to do things the way you like. The one thing about Maya is there's always, or any 3D modeling application for that matter, there's a hundred different ways to do anything. So I don't want you to think that my way of doing anything is uh, by any means the end all be all of the way of doing things. And then I already kind of have space here for these other two windows. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete those for those other two windows. Okay. Now for our top windows here, um, we have a little window that's going to be right here. And then we have an even smaller window that's going to be um, up here. So we're going to be a little bit more creative here in how we um, how we create these. So I'm going to use sort of like the existing geometry, but I'm also going to use my multi-cut to sort of extend uh, some of this geometry in a way that it doesn't extend throughout the model. So I'm going to have my this window here start right down here, but I want it to come up maybe about right in here. So what I'm going to do for that is I'm just going to take my multi-cut tool and I'm going to cut just like this. And it again, doesn't have to be exact. We'll fix that here in a moment and just do something like that. And now you'll notice here that this line is uneven and I don't really want an uneven window. So what I'm going to do is just shift select both of those verts and I'm going to scale down until they're perfectly even, right? So now that's a perfectly vertical line. And now for these, I want them also to be square and I could scale them as well, but instead what I'm going to do is hold down my V, V as in van or V as in vector. Um, and that will turn on my point snapping. And with that held down, I can sort of hover over my, um, my X axis arrow here, click and hold. And I'm just going to hover over the point I want it snapped with. So that point right there. So now it's perfectly aligned with that point. So I'll repeat that. So hold down V and just perfectly line that up. Perfectly line, perfectly line that up. And now I have a nice little hole here that is basically all quads um, for my little window. And then I can just go ahead and delete those those faces for that window. And then I'm going to have another tiny little window up here. So I can kind of uh, just do the same thing. So I'm just going to grab my multi-cut tool and we will, let's see, we'll have it maybe start here. I definitely want it to be a tad bit smaller. So I think I'm going to do something like this, and then I'm just going to extend that down there to that point and do the same thing there. And then again, I'm going to grab these four verts right here and scale them down so they're perfectly even. And then I'm going to snap this to that point this to that point and now we have a perfectly even square and now one thing that I've noticed here is that I can actually get rid of these two edges here the reason being is if I delete these I will have a perfect quad here a perfect quad here and I'm not going to have any sort of interference or ingons if I get rid of those two uh, little edges. So the one thing I want to do when I delete edges like this is always do control or command delete and that will also delete the vertices. So just let me show you a quick example of what I mean by that. If I just click delete, it looks like it deleted those edges and it did, but basically the vertices are still there. 
making these faces here in Gons. So this is basically a one, two, three, four, five, six sided polygon. Even this one, right? If we look at this polygon here, that looks like a, a quad, looks like a square, uh, looks like it has four sides, right? But if we look at the verts, there's verts there. So this is actually a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sided polygon. So that is an n-gon. So let me just back up and show you if I just control Z to back up before I deleted those edges. Now, if I hit control delete, it will also delete the verts, right? So then I can just delete that little edge there. And, uh, and then I have all my windows cut out. Now I could come to the back and, and we could make a little window in the back as well. Um, I think I'm going to leave it. I think that's the back of the house. We'll leave it the way it is. Um, and that is my windows cut out. Now in the next video, uh, we'll jump forward to doing something a little bit more fun. We'll work on making the shingled roof here uh, using something called mash. Um, and then our house will actually start to look like a really cool model. Um, so, so yeah, in the next video, we'll get to um, maybe working on the shingled roof a little bit and uh, continue fleshing out our house model.